Dear brothers and sisters, today we have a presentation as we have a custom now to ask parishioners to come and present on a topic. Today, as you saw in the bulletin, Dominica will present on participation in the church. So without further ado, I will invite Dominica to present what she has prepared, participation in the church. Your blessing, Father, and good morning to all of you. I have nothing really new to say to you, but I will please allow me to make a confession. My family and I came to our Dormition community in 2013. Our son Fotis was about nine years old. He was an older boy and he was attending Greek school. We slowly came to uh, learn our fellow parishioners, all of you, and started participating in the festival and other events of the church life. I became involved with some ministries as projects to do in the church. You see in my professional life, I am a neuroscientist and I live and breathe for projects. And this is my confession to you. My fear that being involved in the church life in a project-centered way will give me the falsehood of participation in the fullness of my faith. Because participating in the church life is not to accomplish a bunch of projects, at least not in the way that a project is defined in my professional life where the project is the center of actions of each project member. Instead, participation in the church is about building relationships with each other in communion and with love to accomplish these projects. That is the ultimate goal of each project, if you wish. After all, our faith teaches us that only in relationship with each other we can exist and we can come to the Lord. We believe in the Father in relationship to the Son, the Son in relationship to the Father, the Holy Spirit in relationship to the Father and the Son, all together as one. Participation, therefore, in the church is guided by our Lord's prayer, our biggest gift from Christ himself. We say, our Father, making us all his children, brothers and sisters, together, we participate in the church. Growing up, my brothers and I, I'll tell you a story, used to spend summers in our village with our grandmother. Every day there were mountains to climb, rivers to swim, cliffs to fall from. At the end of the day, you could not recognize boys from girls. Our hair were tangled, our faces covered with dirt, bloody and stained clothes, testaments of games, hugs, cries, and a lot, a lot of fights. And then there was Sunday. Everybody went to church. It was located at the bottom of the hill and it seemed to swallow us in. I remember how different my friends looked even from the day before. Their hair were washed and combed, their clothes were clean. We were all holding hands and talking like nothing had happened before, even after all of our fights. In fact, we were more than friends. We were brothers and sisters there to pray together to our Father. Do you have a favorite part of the liturgy? Let me tell you mine. It is at the beginning of Agia Anafora. I remember my late uncle, our priest, Father Lefteris, tall with a very wide embrace. When he was coming out of the altar at the beginning of Holy Anafora in our small church, he would look us in the eyes, extend his hands, and say, let us lift our hearts up to the Lord. And as a child, I had this vision of all those hearts of the faithful in the church, slowly going up in the sky, pushing each other to go higher and higher up to the Lord. There is no way to pray, no way to participate in the church life without all those hearts lifting together up to the Lord. It starts here when we participate together in the church. Later on in our Lord's Prayer, we ask and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We ask of his merciful love to forgive and be forgiven and this is the other big aspect of how we participate in the church together. We all know the power of love in our relationships with each other. And let me tell you another story. When I was pregnant with Foti, I wondered if I would be able to become a good parent. I remember reading book after book on parenting to get better prepared. The thing that struck me the most was when I read that mothers of premature babies, even when they had little milk to feed their children, when they held them skin to skin, stroked them and kept them warm in their embrace. The babies grew healthier than babies that were fed well, but neglected. We therefore participate in the church life in loving relationships, such that even when we have one minute to spare, like those mothers that have very little milk, it will multiply, it will nourish and embrace 
all our brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to thank Father Anthony for introducing me for many things, but for introducing me for Metropolitan, to Metropolitan Bloom, whom I will paraphrase. I recognize in myself the moments of darkness, of unfaithfulness to Christ, to the gospel, to one another, to myself. Those moments I must face singly, but also collectively here in my participation in the church life, in communion and in the love of my fellow parishioners, my brothers and sisters, in this beautiful mystery we call church. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and always in his love, amen. Well, thank you, Dominica, for the beautiful presentation.